the dark of night turns to the light of day. Cold winter snows melt to spring blossoms. A young tree grows a hundred feet tall. The world of nature is always changing. To survive, animals must adapt to all sorts of changes. Even nature must adapt to changes too. Most changes animals face are small. A flower may blossom, seeds might ripen, or the wind can shift direction. Animals may barely notice these. Every day, though, animals must prepare for one big change, the shift from daylight to dark. Different animals prepare in different ways. Small birds, for example, eat lots of food. Their throat and stomach are designed to hold a whole night's worth so they can sleep without getting hungry. As small birds go to bed, owls awaken. Owls see at night because their big eyes are specialized for gathering light. In fact, their eyes are so specialized for gathering light, they have little power for gathering color. Owls, as a result, are nearly colorblind. They fly through a world that is shades of gray, like a black and white TV. Often, when animals adapt to one thing, they lose ability somewhere else. Owls gain night vision at a cost of seeing in color. As owls return to bed, gray squirrels greet a new day. It seems trading bed for breakfast always takes some adjustment. One way or another, every animal adapts from daylight to dark. A number of animals sleep through the winter, too. This is called hibernation. Bears and other animals that hibernate eat lots of food in fall. The fat they put on serves as the body's pantry during the winter long sleep. The ability to add fat is an important adaptation for many animals in cold climates. Other animals adapt to winter by migrating. Lots of birds migrate, and so do certain mammals. Caribou travel south hundreds of miles to wintering grounds, where they find food and shelter, though it is still very cold. Many animals bundle up for winter, too. White-tailed deer wear thin reddish fur in summer, then grow thick gray fur for winter. The fur insulates so well, deer can sleep on snow without melting it. Some weasels shed their brown summer coat in fall and then grow a white one. But not all weasels turn white. Weasels living in the south where it rarely snows stay brown year round. They do not need to adapt to snowy weather. Every season brings its own changes to which animals must adapt. But animals face other sorts of changes, too. For example, consider changes in habitat, the type of environment where an animal lives. Many things affect habitat, including fires, floods, and acts of man. 
One very common natural change to habitat is caused by succession. In succession, one group of plants replaces another, usually over many years. We can think of succession as the way young habitat grows old. Let's start with some bare ground, perhaps left by a farmer who plowed it but did not plant crops. During the next hundred years, the habitat here will go through a series of natural changes. At first, the land will grow grasses and weeds. Then, quick-growing shrubs and trees will shade out the weeds and dominate or take over. This thicket of shrubs and young trees will have lots of twigs and stems. In time, these shrubs and trees may be replaced by different kinds that are slower growing but get very strong and tall. Once these big trees dominate, the habitat is mature. Mature habitat does not change for long periods of time. Animals often do not adapt to changes brought by succession. Consider what happens as a field turns into a forest. At first, when the field has weeds, rabbits live there. As shrubs and trees take over, these animals are replaced by thicket-loving species, such as cardinals. These eventually are replaced by woodpeckers, squirrels, and other animals of mature forests. During succession, animals get replaced rather than adapted. Squirrels and woodpeckers replace rabbits when trees replace weeds. Most animals are adapted to live in a certain habitat. Adaptations provide them tools they need. Woodpeckers have sturdy bills for digging into trees. However, some animals seem more adaptable than others. They can live in a greater variety of places. White-tailed deer range over most of North America. They are at home in hot southern swamps and snowy northern woods and all sorts of areas in between. Whitetail adapt to almost any kind of habitat as long as it has some trees for shelter. Other animals may not adapt so well. The red cockaded woodpecker lives only in mature southern pine forests where it finds old trees which suffer a disease that makes them easy to dig into. The red cockaded uses these diseased trees for nesting. Without them, it will not nest. It cannot adapt. Animals like the red cockaded woodpecker, which cannot adapt, sometimes become endangered. As the area where they live changes, their population shrinks. If their habitat changes too much, the species disappears. When no more live anywhere, the species is extinct. Extinction is a part of change in nature. Since life began on Earth, millions of species have become extinct. Among them were dinosaurs. We are not sure why dinosaurs disappeared millions of years ago, but it seems the Earth's climate changed and they could not adapt. As the dinosaurs disappeared, other kinds of animals did adapt, but over a very long time. In a slow process called evolution, new animals developed new kinds of bodies and new ways of living better suited to the changing world. The tremendous variety of birds and mammals around us today evolved from reptiles of the dinosaur age.
Evolution not only allows animals to adapt to changes, but also to take advantage of new opportunities. For example, mammals that can swim can live along streams or lakes. Other mammals that need little water can live in deserts. Through time, thousands and thousands of years, one kind of animal may split into many different groups, each one molded like clay to fit into a particular place. Evolution and adapting to changes continues today, perhaps faster than ever, because animals must now adapt to changes made by humans. Unfortunately, as we plow land, cut forests, and build homes, Many animals, including the endangered red wolf, cannot adapt quickly enough and face extinction. Other animals, though, are adapting, and we can see their changes. For example, cardinals are living farther north because they can now find winter food at our bird feeders. Also, many flies, cockroaches, and beetles adapt rapidly to insecticides chemicals used to control pests. When these pests are no longer affected by these chemicals, we have to develop new insecticides to stay ahead of them. At times, animals are amazingly adaptable. They find ways to survive in darkness, in winter, and in a variety of habitats. It is a matter of survival. But there is also a limit to adaptability. A rabbit cannot live in treetops. A caribou cannot live in the tropics. Sometimes, when the change becomes too great, certain animals may be replaced by different species better suited to the new habitat. Given enough time, nature may even develop new kinds of animals through evolution. Change is a part of nature, and nature never stops adapting to changes.